Welcome to Club Isolation. When they won't let you go to the club, we bring the club to you. Tonight's guest, from Burien, Washington, making his comedy debut in front of a packed house full of empty chairs. Please welcome my little buddy, Best Eddie. Hey, hi, how you doing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Isolation Club. Well, since it's Saturday night and we're not allowed to go out to the clubs, I thought I'd try and bring a little comedy to you. This is only my second time trying to do stand-up. Last time, they told me to sit down. But I'm trying to make it look like we're all in the club together. Yes, the laughter is canned. I do have an audience. They're in the can. <laughs> laughing. Just so long as they're sitting six feet apart, they don't have to worry about catching COVID-19 or anything else. And I hope that if I hear a, that stinks, that they're not talking about my jokes. Glad you could make it out here tonight. When I got here tonight, the club owner saw how big I was. He said, I'm glad you could make it in here tonight. <laughs> As I squeezed through that little front door. Anyway, my name is Fast Eddie. That's F-A-S-T, not F-A-T. I know we're not in church, but I have a little confession to make. I'm overweight. No. That's right. I really am. What? You hadn't noticed? No. Well, that's because you're nice. Blind people usually are nice. Sometimes I wish everyone was blind so people don't see other people's differences and pick on them. What a wonderful, wonderful world this would be if we were all blind. Except on the freeways. <laughs> There's already enough blind drivers. And deaf ones, too. You ever shouted, Hey, you bonehead! And then seen them just... <laughs> And then you say, what you deaf, dumb, blind idiot. But then you feel awful because you realize they actually were deaf when they smile back and respond with friendly sign language. But we should be nice. Treat people the way that we'd like to be treated, regardless of color, beliefs, size. Do it to others. The drug guy give you his bottle. So would the babies. The old guy would give the young guy his wisdom. But then again, the young guy was already a wise guy. It's good for the most part that people don't pick on people for their differences anymore. But with fat people, it's different. Since we can't joke about so many other things, fat people are fair game. Teasing the overweight isn't considered a hate crime. It's considered an ate crime. They ate too much. I can make fun of myself, but making fun is only fun when everybody's having fun with it. If you're laughing when someone else is hurt by it, it's not really worth the fun, is it? Imagine how it would be if we just treated others like we like to be treated. What if the rich guy would come up to you and give you a hundred dollar bill? Or instead of a ticket, the cop would pull you over and give you one of his donuts. Or if I came up and gave you this candy, half this candy bar. Before I go any further, seriously, I would like to get something off my chest. These man boobs. I mean, I appreciate a nice rack on a woman. If a guy's going to have a nice rack, it belongs in the back of his truck with guns in it, not on his chest. It's embarrassing and unfair. Nobody's ever seen me with my shirt off. Not even my wife. Not even me. I was born with a shirt off. I showered with my shirt off. It's harder to get clean that way. People might say, man, that guy stinks. But he sure has a nice clean shirt. My shoes are a different story. I haven't seen my feet in years. Maybe you can see them. Are they tied? Did I step in something? Oh, it must be the showering with the shirt thing. I tried to lose weight, but it gets harder as you get older. It's good that one thing gets harder as you get older. 
<laughs> Metabolism changes as we age. When I was a young man, I lost 130 pounds and kept it off for eight years. Eventually, I did find those pounds, though. They were hiding in my fridge. <laughs> I tried everything. Rice cakes. Whoever came up with that ought to be sued. Listen, I know cakes. I've bought them, I've baked them, and I've eaten them. And rice cakes aren't cakes. <laughs> what about those diet drinks? They're supposed to be a meal replacement. I drink one and say, mmm, that was good. What's for dinner? <laughs> That's it? Man, I'd give the rich guy his hundred bucks back for half a candy bar. <laughs> You know, way back when they had these little caramels that were supposed to help you lose weight. They called them AIDS. A-Y-D-S. You don't see them anymore. You know, it's been a long time since they've come on TV and said, lose weight with AIDS. <laughs> Nowadays, people would think, yeah, that might work. But there's got to be a better way. I know I look pretty big. But I only weigh 136 <laughs> kilograms. I so, I'm not that fat. I'd be skinny in the metric system. I'm just not height-weight proportionate. If only I was nine feet tall, the club owner would still be saying, I'm glad you could make it in here tonight, as I duck to get through that little front door. <laughs> Being overweight is not for the faint harder. I'm told that fat people have a higher risk of Heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, diabetes. <laughs> but every candy bar has a silver lining. We're among the least likely to die from things like starvation, <laughs> or freezing. We're all pretty well insulated. We're drowning. You know what? Fat floats. <laughs> Have you tried to drown a stick of butter? Why? <laughs> I keep saying diets don't work. You have to exercise. So I started walking. I took it very seriously. Walk, walk, walk. Why, I must have walked 10 miles a day. Just from the couch to the fridge. <laughs> over and over again. I walked 10 miles and gained 10 pounds. So that did it. Then I tried the fruit and vegetable diet. I loaded up on apple pie and carrot cake and potato salad. I didn't lose an ounce. Uh, but there's always barbaric surgery. I mean, bariatric surgery. <laughs> you know what that is? Well, they slice you open, they take out your stomach, your intestine, and most of your innards. I thought about it, but I just didn't have the guts for it. <laughs> After the surgery, everything just goes straight through. Whoosh. You just eat on the toilet. Pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> I would lose weight, but knowing they're going to be cutting me open and taking out my stomach, my intestines, my gizzard, I admit, I'm chicken. <laughs> I know fat is bad, it's unsightly and unhealthy, but I try to be jolly, to live the stereotype. Like Santa. <laughs> I'd love to see people smile and laugh. If I can sacrifice my body, my health, my self-esteem to make you happy, I'm glad to do it. You skinny folks can take all the best trophies, ribbons, and the top awards. Me? I'll settle for the leftovers. <laughs> like I said, I really do wish people were blind, not noticing the faults of others. Why, if you were blind, you wouldn't see me sneaking that last piece of cake. And getting away with that piece of cake would be a piece of cake. <laughs> I'd thought about doing comedy before, but I get very, very nervous in front of people. It's like you're standing there naked, and nobody wants to see a naked fat guy. <laughs> My worst fear is telling a joke and seeing people either bored or looking confused, cocking their head like a dog. <laughs> and it would be easier to tell jokes in front of a pack of dogs. They always have that look on their face like something's funny. <laughs> Oh, you've been the best doggone audience. Thanks for putting up with me tonight. I'm going to shut my big fat trap and let you get back to more important things. I've got more important things to do, too. It's two for one night on tacos at Jack in the Box. <laughs> so I'm going to make like a banana and split. In fact, I might make a banana split. Just one last thing. 
We've had enough fat jokes for tonight. So please don't give me a big round of applause. <laughs> Just give me a hand full of cookies. <laughs> Thanks again, folks. My dinner's getting